in just a short space of time, AI has rapidly transformed from a niche area of computer science into a ubiquitous force reshaping modern life. AI regulation. Generative AI. I can just wait for the AI to do it. But to fuel AI, it needs to process data. Lots of data. And that needs scores of massive data centers. Across the world, construction projects are underway. But building data centers is only one part. Where do we get the power to run them? This is the central question facing the future of AI. Because these AI operations need power, and a lot of it. The main bottleneck for AI was initially computing power. Were there enough chips to process the data? But now energy is being seen as the critical factor. How do we power the data centers? I think we would probably build out bigger clusters than we currently can if we could get the energy to do it. The term data center is becoming ever more vague. It largely describes a building or section of a building that is used to store digital data, along with the compute power needed to manage and distribute this information. This is normally accessed remotely via some sort of network, the most obvious example of this being the internet. Having large racks of computers working 24 hours a day to manage this data drives the large power draw. Power consumption increases exponentially with AI data centers. Firstly, it requires a huge amount of information to be stored, fed through, and created when training the machine learning algorithms. Secondly, the end AI tools require massive computational resources, including large amounts of GPUs to process and analyze large data sets when generating the end result. Large language models like ChatGPT and image generation models like DALI and Midjourney cannot be processed on devices like laptops and phones. They require communication with cloud data centers for every transaction. James Walker is the Chief Executive Officer and Director of Nanonuclear Energy Inc., a company looking to provide cutting-edge portable microreactors and other microreactor technologies. We've spoken to a number of um, people that are trying to build data centers at the moment. And some of the projections they require will go up to sort of two gigawatts. And those are just the conversations we're having. I'm sure there are other conversations that are being had at the moment where they are asking for a lot more than that. President Trump and his team envision a future in AI development where the US leads the world, powering everything from autonomous vehicles to military AI. But let's talk numbers. A typical AI data center can consume as much electricity as a small city. And when you multiply that by hundreds or even thousands of centers, the demand starts to look, well, pretty intense. Founder of Digiconomist Alex De Vries tells us how these digital trends have accelerated energy consumption. During the previous decade, they were responsible for at least 1% of global electricity consumption, and that percentage is like increasing fast over the past few years uh, due to trends such as uh, digital currency mining uh, and also recently artificial intelligence which is also extremely energy hungry as well so you know in the coming years it's already been estimated that data centers are going to be responsible for you know three to four percent of global electricity consumption uh, so it's quite significant to put that into perspective, estimates suggest that data centers are currently consuming more than the total energy consumption of France. We spoke to technology analyst Jack Gold, who tells us why this is such a massive problem. Elon Musk built a new XAI plant in Nashville, I believe it was. We looked at the power required to, to run that thing, and it's the equivalent of about 55 or 60,000 homes. And where are you going to get that from? Most uh, electrical generation, at least in, in the U.S., is already uh, on the edge. That, that is to say that you can't really increase it by 10 or 15 or 20 percent. The plants won't handle it. And, and we already have brownouts, right, in the summer when it gets real hot and everyone's got their air conditioning on. The energy grid is an interconnected distribution network of power lines and substations, delivering current from the source of generation to your house. While managing the voltage and amplitude, to power home electronics at a consistent and accepted level. Modern power generation is made up of multiple different methods and technologies, primarily including coal, gas, nuclear, solar, and wind. Each of these offer benefits and downsides, often being implemented for different use cases and locations. For example, 
solar works better in sunny climates, and wind turbines are often placed offshore where there is more uninterrupted wind. Whether it's a few hundred megawatts or multiple gigawatts, these generation systems are only designed to be able to provide a certain amount of power to any given area. When a higher amount of energy is being consumed than expected, it creates a strain on the available resources and can limit supply to end users. Building new plants can be slow, costly and complicated. So the question arises, does the United States or any developed country have the energy infrastructure to support massive expansion? It's true, some parts of the US are already experiencing power shortages because of data centers. States like California and Arizona, which have long struggled with electricity demand, are seeing increased strain on their grids due to the rapid expansion of data centers. And while AI is pushing us to the cutting edge of technology, it's also pushing our existing energy grids to their limits. Whenever a big energy consumer shows up on your power grid, whether it's a crypto miner or an artificial intelligence-based data center, we start consuming a whole lot of power and the supply typically doesn't just go up. Like it takes a long time to increase your available power supply. The only thing that might happen is that there are some redundant energy sources that you can reactivate, some old um, coal-based power plants that you can uh, maybe trigger to, to provide the power that you need. But one of the issues they're having is that they just can't extend uh, or increase their power supply anymore. They're already maxed out. So in that case, the only consequence is that, OK, they're just going to be paying more for uh, power because uh, these are simple laws of supply and demand. The supply is the same, demand goes up, so prices go up. As AI accelerates, it will only make things more challenging. Some US states are actively pushing to become the next tech hubs for these AI data centers because they have surplus power. States like Wyoming, Texas and North Dakota have vast swathes of untapped energy potential. Wyoming has been making big moves with wind energy, while Texas is already home to some of the world's largest data centers. These states have a unique opportunity to attract data-driven industries. But it's not just about having extra power, They'll need the infrastructure to support it, too. Of course, building new data centers isn't all smooth sailing. The big cloud providers haven't been able to build data centers in areas where they would like to because there isn't enough power to power them. Nuclear is one way to do that. It is also risky in the sense that it takes a long time for regulations to be put in place to allow you to build a new plant. It, it, it can take a decade. The really big plants that we built in the past take a long time to construct, even if once you get the regulation. Nuclear seems like a good option for power generation, as it doesn't create greenhouse gases. However, these plants are complicated, from both a legal and construction standpoint, as well as highly expensive and time-consuming to build. Not to mention aspects like nuclear waste management and the expense of eventual decommissioning. For example, the new Hinkley Point C site in the UK is currently predicted to cost £46 billion, or $58 billion, and not to be completed until 2031. That's a six-year delay on completion and a staggering £28 billion over the original £18 billion budget. Renewable energy sources like wind and solar are growing, but they can't provide the consistent energy data centers demand. Renewables like solar and wind are heavily dependent on environmental conditions. No wind means the turbines can't spin. Too many clouds and the solar panels become inefficient. This creates an unpredictable and inconsistent method of power generation. Energy storage facilities are being widely developed to account for this inconsistency, including lithium-ion battery plants and renewable, more eco-friendly alternatives like gravity batteries and hydro storage facilities. However, these are systems that need to rely on a considerable amount of redundancy, both in storage and for extra generation in optimal conditions, which takes up more space and resources to achieve. The problem with them is that they are too intermittent. The data centers and AI need very little downtime on an annual basis. And you can obviously supplement that by having a, a very large footprint dedicated to, say, solar with big storage facilities. But then you're getting into quite a lot of expense 
and you're still not de-risking it and you still need to have a lot of fallback systems for when power is intermittent and it is not the right season and conditions aren't optimal and your storage facility is being run down on and, th and then you run the risk of the entire operation shutting down and needing to fall back on something like diesel. That's why tech giants like Google, Amazon and Microsoft are backing startups looking to provide the next generation of nuclear power plants. There are a number of startup companies that are trying to build smaller nuke plants and they think they can build it very quickly. The question becomes regulations. Will the government allow it? Uh, and, and that's to be seen. Now, with the new Trump administration coming on board, it's much more likely they're going to be favorably inclined to allow that kind of technology. In my opinion, it's actually a good idea. SMRs, or small modular reactors, seem to be the magic answer to a lot of these power concerns. Companies like Last Energy and Rolls-Royce are looking to provide a bolt-on solution where data centers are able to have their own personal nuclear power plant to directly generate electricity for their needs. The modular aspect allows them to scale up as needed. There's also talk about implementing these into areas like container ships to address shipping emissions. Numbers are currently being thrown around, like the ability for a ship to run for 30 years without refueling. They've essentially done an assessment of all the available power systems that are available to them and, and decided that it's really only feasible that that amount of power can be generated by nuclear. And it has additional benefits too, like high baseload power, you can put it wherever you want. But their energy projections are huge. Like I think over the, the next 20 years, they're going to require somewhere in the region about 30 to 40% of um, increase in power that the, the United States is currently utilizing. Although in development, these SMRs still have a long way to go, predominantly in regulation. After all, safety is a major concern with anything nuclear. For the time being, we're seeing companies like Microsoft striking direct energy deals with the likes of the Three Mile Island nuclear facility. This will provide them power when it reopens properly in 2028, after suffering the worst nuclear incident in US history in 1979. In the meantime, there's the question of how to balance energy usage for consumers versus AI operations. Initially, the new data centers envisioned by Stargate will need power from somewhere. They will come up with interim solutions. I think they're probably going to use gas. Problem with that, obviously, is that that's not feasible in all locations to run gas to remote locations um, to do data centers and that kind of thing. It's, it would be the same problem if you were to try to install transmission lines from grids to to fuel data centers. And a lot of the grids cannot afford to lose that much power to a data center. And I think that happened to Amazon very recently where what they would wanted to buy off the grid got shut down essentially and the utility provider was not allowed to provide them that power because it was, it was too significant a portion of, of what the utility company was able to provide to the, the, the local population. Will people have enough power in their homes or will we have to choose between keeping the lights on and powering the AI of the future? But it's not just power that data centers consume at an alarming rate. All the power consumption creates heat, and the GPU chips processing AI data need to be cooled. That means fresh water and a lot of it. An average data center is estimated to use about 300,000 gallons or 1.2 million liters of water every day just for cooling. That's roughly the equivalent to the water usage of 100,000 homes. One innovative idea is to build underwater data centers and use the oceans to call the AI processing chips naturally. Microsoft has already experimented with an underwater data pod in the waters off Scotland. The container behind me, it fits on a, it fits on a trailer, it fits on a cargo ship, and it, it allows us to actually build up this data center to any size that we want. One of the upsides of the Stargate initiative touted by President Trump is hundreds of thousands of jobs. That may be the case in construction, but data centers need a few people to operate them once built. They are not a powerhouse for employment, as Sweden discovered. They gave power subsidies to data centers for like six years, seven years, since 2017, and they stopped last year. Um, and then they realized like, okay, we're not getting a lot of jobs from that. Uh, we would prefer to put this power in steel manufacturing, which is more labor intensive. There's no easy answer here. But one thing is certain, AI's power demand will only keep growing. Can the US and the rest of the world handle it? It depends on what time horizon hey, you're talking about. I mean, in, in one year, things could be dramatically worse than today. 
in five years, huh, you would expect that things have kind of, you know, calmed down. <laughs> and in 10 years, or oh, that's so far away, like, <laughs> the world could be huh, looking completely different by then. Indeed, in the short term, President Trump's Stargate initiative will be a massive challenge for power generation in the US. Even with some states having free energy supply capacity, the overall strain on the grid could push it to breaking point. With grid upgrades on the table, the future of AI-powered America will depend on how we balance power, technology, and the environment. Remember to hit the subscribe button and ring that bell to stay updated with our latest content. And while you're here, why not check out another one of our exciting videos? Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.